Thank you, Kayla. I, uh, I felt really cool walking from the side of the stage, so I had to do that, make myself look a little cooler than I actually am. Uh, so you guys, content. Content is currency. Content is king. You've heard that before, right? Who's heard that phrase, content is king? Okay, it's queen. It's the house. It's the parliament. It is the Senate. Content is everything today because the currency that we can gain from content, like an attention, is higher than it's ever been. And so I want to show you guys a, uh, a picture of who knows who this guy is right here on the screen by raise of hands. One, two, three. Three people, okay. Who, who is he? Casey Neistat, okay. So three people knew who he was. So the gentleman behind him, I don't know if you can make it out, that's, who knows who Will Smith is by raise of hands? Everybody in the room knows who Will Smith is. So why is Will Smith hanging out with a YouTube vlogger, right? There's an actual shift happening and it's been happening for years because like this, this is like one of Casey's vlogs from years ago where a mega celebrity is actually trying to go in and collab with a YouTuber. Like why would he do that? He has a massive platform because he understood the shift that's happening. This is a short little clip. You know, if this social media thing doesn't work out, you should be an actor. <laughs> Can we take a picture real quick? Yeah, you guys, Will Smith is right there. Why do you want a picture I just with got a me? Buzz. It's yeah. you. Well. So look at the crowd around Casey, right? This is the actual shift that is happening. And you know, Will's like, everybody knows who he is, right? Um, and so he's collabing with a YouTuber and he's done a great job. This is pre like stage slap, by the way. Um, and so uh, his popularity, you know, I think it's like one of those interesting things that we're seeing the evolution of who people pay attention to, right? Even one of the biggest movie stars in the world, you see how the crowd around Casey in that, in that video. Um, another shift that's happening, it's crazy to me that in, in personality, an individual can actually become worth a billion dollars, right? Like never before, like back, you know, we look at 20 years ago, 30 years ago, like the billion dollar companies or owners or CEOs of companies, like a, automobile manufacturer, software company, oil, right? But now a 21-year-old, Kylie, becomes the youngest female billionaire ever, makes the cover of Forbes at 21 because of the attention she garners. Conor McGregor, they have a spirits brand, Proper 12, uh, goes to 600 million in a year. He attaches his name to it, goes to 600 million in one year. Huda, beauty, YouTuber, $1.2 billion net worth. The Rock, tequila brand, zero to 3.5 billion, like that. And then Mr. Beast, he is the best YouTuber in my opinion. When you can make a video about Squid Games and have more views than Squid Games gets on Netflix, like that's serious stuff, right? When you can make a video around the week of the Super Bowl that gets more views than the advertisements and the Super Bowl as a 24 year old, that's crazy, right? So, I mean, I'm not, like, we're not gonna be this. Maybe there's somebody, you know, I think people, somebody, Kayla's probably got potential to be this. Maybe Piper, right? Uh, but we're not gonna, so, but still we can monetize and we can take advantage of like the amazingness that content marketing can bring. So we're gonna go like this kind of like high level strategy, right? Of trying to figure out how we drill into one of these companies because this, these are the most valuable, maybe they're not the most profitable, I mean Apple is the most profitable company in the world now because, right, we're spending all of our time on our phone <laughs> and that makes them valuable. And all of these companies, we're all trying to figure out how we can like take a little bit of the pie because there's 24 hours in one day and it's like a, a pie. And how like all of those previous companies, their job, all they're trying to do is take more of the pie. TikTok's trying to take it, YouTube, Instagram, all of these companies are trying to do that, right? So how do we then like take advantage of that and the, all the resources they're putting into that? So I wanna show with you guys a little background on me and like how we use content marketing in my company like some years ago, how we're doing it today and specific to this industry. So a little bit of my story, I had a company called Salt of the Earth 
And I start, actually, I started working for my neighbor in her garage. I was 14, would ride my back to her house and make salt scrub. I bought the company when I was in college. It took it over and we expanded from, like started like with salt scrubs that we expanded in 12 countries worldwide. Uh, that's me and 08 actually. Our humble beginnings, our first warehouse where we started making this scrub and lotion and got the family involved, right? Like I, it was one, this is my daughter. Um, mix in lotion, and that's a heat gun. I don't know how safe that was. Uh, but the, the kids grew up, right? And now that same daughter is a teenager, she's 13. Uh, and so the evolution of both, like, what I've seen content do by documenting, right? Last year at Spark, who was here last year? Okay, cool, so I talked about culture marketing last year where it's like you basically, you wanna build a remarkable company culture and document it. We call it culture marketing. Using the people in your business to market your brand. I think it's one of the best forms of marketing. So as we did that, like it really helped us grow by just like putting ourselves on camera and being uncomfortable at times. Um, but people knew us by our content, so we put it out there, right? And when we expanded, we were able to really, like we grew globally, right? We grew in, from all over, like to Dubai, to uh, Australia, Mexico, and we were just like this little brand. We got a lot of attention through that. Sammy, Live Love Spa. That's a little shout out there. Um, but we not only did it like with culture, but we did it with education. So we did, built a digital spa school where we actually would educate uh, our spa accounts on how to use our products, right? So we were like, okay, how do, so we built this spa school, we had this awesome warehouse, and we had a lot of fun, and people like fell in love with that, but we were serious about our education. Right, and so that's what we're gonna talk about is a framework and how to do that. After I sold in 2018, ran it for 10 years, I picked up a camera for the first time. I was always directing the camera guy, but now I opened a studio called Creative Juice where we um, create content for skincare brands. Uh, we have a studio design where we're actually taking and we renovate the studio for each brand we work with. They come out, and part of our framework is they film for like two, three days straight. And then um, we take that and then we're gonna like build this whole framework about how we make that content work for that brand. And I wanna show you guys specifically how you can do it for yourself, okay? Like it, you, you don't necessarily, you don't need my studio. Um, maybe you do, right? <laughs> um, but how, you, how can you do this in your own business, your office, your spa, your headquarters, right? Because we're seeing it just like live, we're seeing it work, okay? And so, and we'll get specifically in the weeds. So this high level strategy is like, okay, do we believe that like content is king, queen, and everything? Like you might not be at the level that I'm at. I've just tasted it for years and I saw it work for my business um, over a 10 year period. And then now I'm seeing it work for others that we're helping do it, okay? So what's interesting is like, how do you pull this off, right? Because we might be like, yeah, like that's important, Paul. We get it. But like, let's get into the dirt a little bit and how do we execute this? on a level that really works for us, okay? So I'm gonna show you some frameworks uh, specifically. This is called the evergreen content model, okay? So if we know what an evergreen tree is, it's like green all the time. So it grows, and it starts small, like a lot of plants, and then it just grows up. And over time, you know, evergreen trees are like two, they can last two to 500 years. There's one in Utah, where we're based, that's 800 years old, and um, it doesn't go away. It doesn't really lose its needle, some do, right? But it's always green. So it's kind of like predictable, right? So the, what I want you to think about is like comparing content to evergreen, like a long form content to like an evergreen tree, okay? To kind of create this illustration in our brain. So it's something that like, we, when we develop content, not everything's gonna like last 10 years and be relevant in 20 years from now, but the closer we can get to that, the more resource and energy and time we're actually going to spend on our content that's going to work for us for many years to come, okay? And there's going to be elements of success that is going to help that tree grow. Like, I could plant an evergreen in my yard right now, but next to a sidewalk, but there's like, it's not next to other trees, it's like in a desert, it's not going to do well, right? And so we want to like really achieve success, like what are the little elements we can do to most likely achieve, achieve success with our content? And so we're gonna compare the, the tree to like YouTube, long form content, educational content, and then the little pine cone, like when we shake that tree, we do it the right way, it can produce some amazing cones that are very interesting to people, that also can spread seeds and turn into other long form pieces of content, okay? So here's our little illustration here. So the pine cone, right, it's shorts, it's reels, TikToks, all that kind of stuff, that short form stuff that's very important right now, okay? 
and then the tree is like something that eventually those short forms can turn into long forms, okay? So um, eventually we end up with a forest full of assets is the whole point to this. So let's get specific about a couple examples here. This is a channel that I worked with, a, I consulted with a company. They wanted to create a YouTube channel around their packaging design. And so I had some experience in that, doing some, a lot of my own stuff. And so, and they didn't have a, anybody to be on camera. So like, will you do it? I was like, sure. So for about a year, I, we kind of started and they have 6,000 subscribers. And like, that, like that's in the grand scheme, it's like not a lot of subscribers, but this is, given them hundreds of thousands of dollars of business every year, like even like one video, okay? So this is like their forest, right? So there's some thumbnails in here, and some of the videos have like 600 views, like 1,400 views. Um, you know, this one down here has got like, we, we did like custom packaging on a budget that's got like 42,000 views, I think. Um, and, you know, we did one on like bong packaging too, which was pretty interesting, right? So we're creating extreme value. We're not like talking about the company. Yes, we are, but we're saying, okay, this is bringing a ton of value to an audience that might be interested in doing packaging at some point or custom packaging, right? We're not just, it's not an advertisement, but the more value you bleed out, the, the more you can do. There's a, a video um, on candles. We did like a candle packaging video. It has like 87,000 views. It was done a year ago and it just, right, it's a tree, start out with a little tree like, you know, there was, a, I think they had a thousand subscribers at the time. And just like every day, it just gets views to a very specific audience. So, and now it's at 87,000. And guess what? In 10 years from that, it's going to be like a pretty big tree. That's just going to, the gift that keeps on giving, right? And so this is what like long form evergreen content can actually do for your business. Okay. So what about spas and what about skincare brands? This is what we're here for, right? I'm going to give you a specific case study with one of our clients, Circadia, that we built them, what we call Circadia University. And the idea is, it's like, and what, we, what I want you to think about in your own business, how do you pull this off in your own business, right? How do you take a room, like we took a room and we renovated it to look like Circadia brand. And then we're going in and saying, okay, let's make really relevant protocols to like our customers who pay us today. So the people who see this content are like estheticians and spot owners who are like, it's very relevant to them. Cause like not a lot of other people like care about circadia if they're not specifically using it right now, right? So how do we make content that's so valuable to people paying us right now? Well, we, we made this, you know, this educational video that has like, this was a mas like massage tools for facial massage mediums, right? And then there's like, 12 minute videos in there that like go specific into those categories and then other protocols, right? So when we look at that, we can then kind of back into YouTube because it's really hard to make like awesome YouTube content like over and over and over again and like nail it. So our goal is to like document a lot of stuff, talk about what we're comfortable and we know about. We don't really need to do a lot of prep. It's like as a brand, you're like, okay, this is what I know. Let me talk on camera for a full day and we'll talk about how you can do that and structure that. But then what it turns into is it turns into a, like, I'll take um, three minutes from like the massage tools, a gua sha massage that's relevant to a really broad audience. Okay. And I know it's relevant to a broad audience because I went on YouTube and she talked about lymphatic in here for a minute. And I'm like, okay, let me take this. Let me search lymphatic on YouTube. Okay. There's a ton of content that has a lot of views and people are interested in this subject. But again, if I were to say like lymphatic massage circadia or like um, specific tools or massage mediums, right? Like a, this audience might not care about it. That's like a random person who doesn't know about them. So then we're taking a YouTube and say lymphatic massage and we do like a, a thumbnail and a title. It's like lymphatic massage with gua sha stone, professional techniques and tips based on other titles that we're seeing on YouTube. So on the, on the bottom half of the screen, right, we have the university, like in the first week, like we posted this about like 10 days ago, um, you know, they have 250 licensed estheticians that are customers or potential customers who watched 100% of it, another 350. So we've got 600 people in the first week that are like picking up what they're putting down and like this is a new product launch. So that's like 600 people right then watching it, thousands, several thousand to follow in coming weeks. And then on YouTube, right? I mean, it's got like 900 views, but we're then taking like our tree, we're shaking it. And like when we shake it the right way, we're gonna design content for TikTok Reels Shorts. It's gonna be very relevant to that platform, right? So we're going in, we're creating a ton of content in two days. 
and we're making it relevant to existing customers, relevant to a broad audience through YouTube. And then, right, this has 1,500 likes, 271 shares, and 702 saves with 23,000 views, 40 seconds in the first, like, six days. <laughs> um, and somebody discovers that little pine cone, and they're like, this is awesome. Like, what, what tree did this come from? And then they go to the tree, and they're like, this is an awesome tree. Like, where's the forest? And they're in this forest, and they're like, how do I get It's a funnel-up approach with content. Because, like, TikTok and all the, like, this, it's so important, right? Because it's, like, relevancy, right? Um, but you want it to have a point. Like, what are we trying to get people to do? Are, are, like, we just trying to get them to buy our products? Ultimately, yes. But how do we give them value, like, all the way through, through, like, this kind of bottom funnel approach, okay? So now we have a thumbnail, right? So that has lymphatic on it, it's very clear. High quality thumbnail, we have a thumbnail for the shorts. And we've got this like content that's gonna work for us for a long period of time. We just structured it the right way and said, okay, let's, let's spit out value to our existing customers and then find the nuggets that can be like their own trees on YouTube. Okay, and then it, you end up with a lot of thumbnails too. When you design content, when you put effort and you say, I'm gonna pound this out for two days. I'm going to pound this out for three days. You end up with a lot of thumbnails and a lot of high quality that you can ultimately use for your website and marketing. Okay? End up with a forest. You do, you know, a dozen protocols across a session and then you've got a ton. Like, those slides back with like the Circadia University thing, we probably have like seven YouTube episodes in that module that is going to be very relevant for a broad audience. Okay, so I'm, let's talk about a five minute studio because one of the biggest barriers that I feel like people have is like feeling like they should like put out content and then um, publish it. Because like ultimately you don't need like everything in your pocket right now, like the phones are like very quality. And, you, and I know people who just get a lot of traction on YouTube just using like simple equipment. They don't need all the stuff. But I think to look your best, to feel great, we want to look good on camera and we want to like look professional. We want to add value to our brand. So like taking Hannah's um, selfie station idea, right? Let's like create a wall that like works for consumers, but also could serve as a like backdrop for us. And is like taking that pointless conference room that like never gets used, or that like office that just has stuff in it. Let's like make a studio out of that because and just design it specifically for YouTube, design it specifically for education. Okay, and so if you don't know how to do it yourself, work. Uh, on YouTube to like research how to like make a studio, how to do the lighting and all that kind of stuff, then just like find a local videographer who is like good at what they do and hire them one time or like a one month thing. Hey, get us going, start us out, set our camera angles. What camera should we buy? What light should we buy? They know what to do. Like just hire them once or monthly or every quarter or whatever it is. You bring them in and take all of a sudden like the massage room that you're using or that room you're using for facials. Let's take that. And let's put in, we know like we have an overhead cam, we have a side cam, we have a light right here, we have like a nice mic. And so we set that up once and like that's the easy part, like once we get that done. And then from 8 to 10 p.m. after your spot closes, why don't we make some content? Why don't we design some content that's like, right, we, we say, okay, like I'm going to make a long form video and then I'm going to like think about how I can go short form with this as well and make it relevant forever. And so some of that is like you might be looking at a retail wall or a, like I say, like a back room. Like we took our whole office at Salt of the Earth was like shootable space. Like we knew that video is the future and the, every corner in the office was like really cool and it was like we're just going to create a ton of video content and we don't need to set. It's just going to be the space. And it added a lot of credibility and validation to our brand when we did that. Um, you know, 1% of our customers came to our facility, but we made it, so it was like, this is a cool space. Like, we told stories with it that way, right? So that's our five-minute studio. If you are a big organization and a structure, and you're a, kind of like a corporate juggernaut, you're like, I can't just like pull my phone out and, and set up a set in my spa. Um, I think we need to shift the way we're thinking, because the amount of money we spend sometimes on things, people, um, management, all that kind of stuff. Like, it, to me, I think it's like very old, and I think there's a shift that's happened, and that's already happening. And all these, you know, an independent esthetician who has four rooms, like Allison, is going to garner way more traffic, views, and demand in her location than a world-class resort sometimes because she has the daily attention of consumers, right? 
So I think, still think there's a way to do it on a corporate structure where you have a corporate educator, corporate spa director, and you say, okay, let's go in and say, how do we develop protocols that are brand standard? So we're going to get the value to be able to, when we have a new hire, they watch these 20 protocols in depth, plus an in-person training with our corporate team, right? And then how do we then take that content and, and kind of like cut it from there, right? So the, the format's the same. It's a decision that like big companies are actually having to make right now of how they can do content because the speed at which sometimes stuff is done is frustrating probably for a lot of you on a marketing level. So I do think it does need to come from a change uh, in like marketing in general in hospitality um, to start acting like some of these people who are just crushing because in reality we're really professional. We have like the world-class trainers and we're really good at what we do in some of our bigger spas, our resort spas. So why don't we act like it? Like if we're like, we have a massage therapist that has 25 years experience, people don't know that unless she's literally giving a massage to one person, they understand that and they're feeling that. But putting it together the right way to have, um, you know, the, the brand standard on, on content level and like training. So it's like, okay, let's just create a training protocols and videos that we can share and like, okay, let's smush these up into YouTube. So it does come from a decision from kind of the top, right? Give you guys a couple other examples um, on this. So there's three things that everybody wants, okay? In just globally, right? Like they want health, wealth, and, and happiness. So, so luckily for us, like in our industry, like we, we cover two of those. So when we're thinking about content, we're like thinking about, like, okay, like what do we want to talk about? Like does this help somebody be more healthy? Okay. Let's go into a, like massage, right? So typically, if we were to like make a video, like again, our you know hydrofacial, our massage name like might be super relevant to the people who are already fans of us and who love our stuff, and they might be into that piece of content on our website or on YouTube. But for the rest of everybody else, like they don't care. It doesn't serve them. People care about themselves, and they want content that does that. So. Like we wouldn't say like this is a relaxing massage in our spa. We'd say like three things, like we'd go and like how does it make somebody more healthy? Like well massage, right? Massage makes people, does it make people sleep better? Yeah. That's for me. <laughs> so we think about okay what's the secondary benefit of massage? Not just like this is relaxing, but like does it make you sleep better? And so what I did here was I actually went in and again YouTube and I was like okay how to I start typing how to sleep and like look at all those ideas that come out. How to sleep better, how to sleep fast, how to sleep on your back, how to sleep in two minutes. Uh, does sleep make you taller? I need that one. Um, look better, I need that one too. Jeez, this is, I, I mean, this is good. So I think we go in and we start typing and we're like, wow, this is like so many content answers right here. But like, and you might already have that therapist Who's been, in, who's been around for 30 years, who knows so much and has her own case studies about this kind of stuff, right? So let's think about how we can redesign this content a little bit and just tilt it a little bit and have those conversations with uh, the powers that be. And so like, how do we like design education for our existing therapists across six spas that we have in our organization that they can actually take home and like receive this per protocol training from like the best of the best. And then it's like, let's cut this into these other forms of content. And thank you so much, love, love for having me. Thank you guys for your attention today. Uh,